Hi, this is Ben with Novelex Stereophonic, and today in front of us I have one of my favorite pieces of vintage hi-fi. This is a KLH Model 8 tabletop radio. The top piece is an all-tube monophonic FM tuner and single-channel power amplifier, and the bottom piece is an acoustic suspension speaker cabinet. I just recently picked these up for restoration. I haven't tested them at all. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some history about this piece, um, some of the accessories and stuff that, that could have been purchased along with it. And then we'll put it on the bench and do a uh, initial test, see where it stands. And this is probably gonna be a multi-part series as I go through and restore these beautiful pieces of hi-fi history. So if that sounds cool, stick around. Let's talk a little bit about the brand KLH. So, of course, we need to start with Henry Close. So, Henry was a co-founder of Acoustic Research, which was a company that brought the first acoustic suspension speakers to market, the most prominent model being the AR3 or AR3A, which is still considered one of the best um, vintage speakers of all time. He, you know, throughout his lifetime, founded a few other companies, Advent, a company called Cambridge Soundworks, and then more recently, uh, Tivoli Audio, which was actually kind of a play on this KLH Model 8. So back to KLH, those letters KLH are actually the initials of the founding members, uh, last names. So we have Henry Close, um, Malcolm Lowe, and J. Anton Hoffman. So the KLH company specialized in speakers. They did some very popular speaker designs, but they did also branch out and build uh, component all-in-one turntable systems and stuff like this Model 8. So that's kind of where that fits in. The Model 8 was designed and sold uh, between roughly 1960 to 1965 and was manufactured in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This was a legitimate Henry Close design. It was developed in an era when stereo radio broadcasts were just becoming mainstream. So this unit was designed as a mono receiver but they gave it a provision to eventually be able to receive and reproduce stereo broadcasts. So oftentimes when you see collector sets of these on the market, they'll be paired with another box called a KLH Model 13. And what that does is it plugs into the bottom or the back of, of this unit and decodes the, um, the second channel with FM multiplex and has a separate amplifier for a second speaker so you can actually reproduce stereo. So I got these spun around just so we have a little change of scenery while I'm talking a little bit here. So I've always kind of had a soft spot for KLH equipment. Um, back around 2015 or thereabouts, I was working at a uh, audio shop in, in Ithaca, New York, and I was tasked with cleaning out some of the storage areas and I stumbled upon this really trash set of vintage speakers. And I tested them, the tweeters didn't work, the cabinets were really beat up, but I was thinking, you know, this might be a good project. So. I ended up talking to the owner and I acquired them and I uh, restored them and I actually ran them as my main speakers for many, many years. I really enjoyed them. And I actually have a, a review of probably the second or third set of those that I restored uh, posted here on YouTube. So I'll throw up a link to that as well. Now, when I was restoring those speakers, I, I found this website called the Classic Speaker Pages, which is an excellent resource for anything early East Coast American. So Acoustic Research, KLH, Advent, it's all up there and there's a lot of really good information. And there's one specific user known as Jay Kent Hollingsworth, or Jay Kent, and he created almost a entire treatise on how to restore a KLH Model 8 radio. It's an excellent resource and I'm gonna be referencing that a lot throughout this video series. Um, I really want to put a special thank, thanks out to, um, to Jay Kent for putting that together. It's, it's, it's really cool that somebody would take the time to compile all that information and get it out there for other people to use and enjoy. So again, I'll be referencing that a lot and I'll actually put a link to, um, to that document in the description as well. So when I moved to New York City, I brought those KLH Model 5s with me, used them for another few years when I, when I first moved here, and then I was cruising around some uh, some Craigslist posts and I found somebody that was selling a KLH Model 8 and it actually had a very rare um, accessory which was a secondary speaker cabinet. Not for stereo but just to add another speaker for listening in a separate room I guess. And what it would do is it would have this plug go straight through it and make simultaneous contact. So it would put the two speakers in parallel. So. 
I, uh, I ended up using that information uh, from Jay Kent to do a full restoration on that set. And I listened to it for a while, but I didn't really have space to keep it, so I ended up selling the set. And it was so beautiful, I regret doing it ever since. since. So I told myself the next time I find one of these, um, I'm gonna restore it and try to hang on to it if I can, because they're just they're just such cool pieces. So that's kind of my history with, with KLH and the Model 8, and um, next I'll go into how I acquired this specific piece, and then we'll throw it up on the bench. I don't often do this, but I think in this case it's really interesting, so I wanted to share this. I'm gonna go over some of the history of this specific KLH Model 8. So once in a while I get, I get leads from people I've uh, bought and sold stuff with before, uh, people I used to work for, things like that, and one day I got a lead for somebody selling a KLH Model 8. So I ended up contacting the guy, and he was local. I went down and met him in Brooklyn and got kind of a, an idea of where, you know, where and when this piece was used. So he had had it in storage for a while and was kind of struggling with the idea of, of letting it go. He needed to downsize, but he wanted to make sure that these went to a good home. So he remembers as a, um, as a child that this radio was sitting in his grandfather's kitchen uh, prominently placed on a little bar and I guess they would listen to it every morning with breakfast uh, you know as they were sitting around the table so this was the the kitchen system and then I guess in another room he had a you know a specific two-channel hi-fi system which featured acoustic research AR4X speakers so you know it was, it was kind of fitting he's got a nice hi-fi set up in the living room for for um, you know uh, critical listening and then a very nice FM radio receiver in the kitchen. So that was that was how they were used. So this was a single owner and we're going to restore these and and get them all back up and running. So that's up next. Let's put this on the bench and get a baseline um, on this set. All right, I'm going to test these uh, devices one at a time because I have a controlled environment here at the bench. So I'm going to start out with with the speaker. So what I've got going on here is I'm going to be feeding a signal from my signal generator into my test amplifier and I'm going to come out and connect to the to the speaker leads with these two wires. So originally this would have had a banana connector on it but that has broken at the base. So I'm just going to strip the wires here to get us good contact. And just as a quick reference, I'm going to take a DCR measurement here, DC resistance. Should have grabbed my 87.5, it's much more viewable at different angles. All right, so, you know, it's going to be roughly a 16 ohm speaker. Has continuity, which is good. Now, as far as I know, this is just a dual like uh, full range speaker there's there's kind of an outline here that you can see where the, it's like a like a three inch driver here and here so let's hook this up to the test amp all right i'm going to start with a one kilohertz sine wave and there it is Take down the frequency. So there's a little bit of rattling there. Turn it down a little bit and see what it does with high frequency. I stop hearing about 15 kilohertz, which is probably pretty respectable for the drivers that are in here. So, speaker cabinet works. Now we'll move on to the uh, the tuner amplifier chassis. Okay, for this part, um, I want to get this thing out of the cabinet and do a visual inspection first before I apply any power here. Just make sure there's no you know tubes that are cracked, no exploded capacitors or anything on the inside. And then we'll fire this up slow on a variac on the dim bulb and uh, see what we're looking like. 
So this is kind of cool. On the bottom, there's a schematic layout. It's kind of hard to see on this one. I'll probably end up replacing this after I refinish the cabinet. But it's got a layout of all the vacuum tubes here and just a general circuit schematic. And if I remember this correctly, I just need to remove these four feet and this chassis should be able to slide out. I'm gonna put this up on its side so that I don't have so much stress on the screw joints. Oh, gotta remove the knobs, of course. And the front of this thing has seen better days. I'm hoping that I'll be able to clean most of this up. This is a pretty fragile surface, but if I take it nice and gentle, I should be able to get it looking good again. And the good thing about the cabinets on these, and you have to watch out for this, it's only on certain, certain years. But if we look closely at this joint, this is a solid walnut cabinet. This is not veneered. So as long as the corners aren't severely damaged, this is very easy to refinish because you don't have to worry about cutting through the veneer when you're sanding. Um, all right, let's get the knobs out for this thing. It's easier than expected. Can't remember if this one has a set screw. Wow, that was much easier than expected. Cool, I should be able to pull this right out. Just gotta be careful not to grab here because I don't wanna break that, uh, that piece. All right, let's move the cabinet out of the way. Well, it's definitely gonna need a good cleaning. Oh, this has been serviced, I think. These caps do not look original. I'll have to look at some pictures, but yeah, it's looking like this may have been serviced at some point in the past. Now, when we do the electronic service on this, all of these red capacitors are gonna go and we'll either restuff or replace the multi-section electrolytic over here. So next up, I'll get a load attached to this and we'll see if it turns on. All right, I've got a few things going on here. So I'll show you quickly. So I've got the output hooked up to my PA81 analyzer. So this is gonna be the load and allow us to monitor any output signal on the scope here. Got a, my FM signal generator set for 90 megahertz. Uh, just putting out a sine wave close to the bottom of the band. Um, be uh, raising the AC level on my variac here and monitoring um, the current draw. And then I've got it attached across my dim bulb here for safety in case something is, um, is shorted or drawing heavy current. So I'm gonna set the treble at the middle, volume all the way down, and I'm going to rotate the tuning dial all the way over to the left so that we're close to that 90 megahertz. All right, power is on. And I'm just gonna slowly raise the level on my Variac here. So what I'm seeing over here, I'm gonna spin it over quick, is an increase in current draw here as I raise the voltage. Yeah, around 60, 60 volts here. I'm just gonna let it sit and see if the power supply comes up. There should be a, a neon indicator here, but it may be burnt out. Continue to raise it here. I'm gonna stop it around like 110 volts. There's the neon. I'm at 105, 107. That should be good there. I don't think the output section has come in yet because I've got nothing on my dim bulb over here. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to come up. 
and we're drawing about 300 milliamps of current for the whole circuit. So that's all the tube filaments and then uh, the output section starting to conduct. So hopefully when I turn up the volume here we're going to get a little bit of noise. Dead quiet, that's not super promising. Look at the scope here. So what I'm doing here is just manipulating the top of this tube socket. This must be part of the audio output section and I'm getting noise at the speaker. So that means the, the audio amplifier is probably working, you know, somewhat in this. So in a future video, I'll inject a signal in there and we'll check the power amp section. But I think the, the tuner is dead. So in the next video, I'll go through and test all the vacuum tubes and, um, and see if we can figure out why the tuner might be silent. So unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to listen to any music this time, but you know, this looks like a good restoration candidate. This should clean up pretty nice. I'm excited to get on to the next steps on this one. Okay, that's going to be it for this part. Thanks for stopping by the channel. If you like this content, I encourage you to subscribe. And we'll see you on the next, uh, next episode on this series. Thanks again.